So oh, that's cool. That's okay. Not cool. Okay, so the last talk in this session is uh, Martino Trevisano. He's a second year PhD student at uh, Politecnico di Torino with Marco Melia. And his PhD topic is about uh, network measurements and big data analytics for uh, traffic classification and also for privacy. Thank you. Hello, I'm Martino Trevisan. Uh, I'm a researcher of Politecnico di Torino. This work has been done in Politecnico di Torino. Uh, together with RNSS Cybersecurity, which is a spin-off of our university that focuses on web tracking. Uh, the paper is Benchmark and Comparison of Tracker Blockers, so should you trust them? The paper is about uh, web tracking. What is web tracking in a nutshell? It is the collection of uh, navigation data of web users when they serve the internet. When we go on web pages, there are companies that are specialized in gathering navigation data about us uh, in the form of uh, browsing history. They build profiles about us and they sell those profiles to other companies. And this is a fundamental part of the web ecosystem because web tracking is uh, at the base of uh, uh, behavioral advertisement and retargeting and other web marketing techniques. How does uh, web tracking work? Uh, something uh, about these slides has also been said by the first presenter, so I will go faster through them. When we open a browser and we go, for example, on a website, bbc.com, our browser contacts the first party server, in this case www.bbc.co.uk, to download the main HTML document of the web page. Then the browser parses it and uh, fetches all the uh, objects of the web page, such as uh, images, uh, style sheets, and JavaScripts, uh, and typically contacts uh, CDNs and, and cloud providers uh, that are third party servers. Then, if the web page embeds a web tracker, our browser contacts the web tracker server to download typically a small and uh, hidden invisible object of the web page. The web tracker server answers with uh, an HTTP response that sets a cookie that goes on the cookie database of our browser. Typically, uh, cookies of web trackers contain a user ID and this user ID is uh, fundamental for the web tracker. That's because if uh, after a while the same user with the same browser goes on another website that embeds the same tracker, the browser will contact again the same web tracker server and will send the cookie in the uh, HTTP request. And uh, in this way, the web tracker matching the user ID is able to rebuild the browsing history of the user. There are other techniques for uh, web tracking, not only cookies. Uh, there is canvas fingerprinting and also flash cookies that are other techniques used by web trackers, but cookies are the most uh, popular. Web trackers are also very, very widespread, very popular. This is a plot coming from our previous work <laughs> where we used passive traces uh, to uh, assess the, the pervasiveness of web trackers. Here on the x-axis we have the most popular web trackers and on the y-axis we have the percentage of users that they reach. We see that uh, the most popular web trackers that are, that are this one, that are part of the Google Galaxy, reach almost the totality of users. So these services know exactly what you're doing on the internet. Another study said that there are more than 10,000 of web trackers active in the web. Uh, tracking, web tracking is annoying, but can also be dangerous. That's because web tracking knows everything about us. They build profiles on our browsing history and they sell them to the highest bidder. And these profiles can contain many sensitive information about us, and this information is used for uh, advertising and is sold also to external companies. There have been cases of uh, uh, 
national security agencies that use web tracking to track people of interest. So for these reasons, uh, in the last years, appeared uh, many uh, ID blocker and tracker blocker on the market. Uh, the most popular is the Block Plus that I think most of you know, and maybe uh, has installed on the his PC. Then Ghoster is maybe the most popular tracker blocker plugin, uh, but there are many others. They are typically uh, browser plugins. Uh, they are not open source, so it's not uh, straightforward to know which uh, web trackers do they actually block. Uh, there have been cases of uh, major content providers of the internet paying uh, ad blockers uh, not to block their ads. And then uh, it's, uh, they are free, so it's not clear how do they make money. There have been cases of uh, trackers that in turn sold, uh, web, web tracker blockers that in turn sold uh, navigation data to other companies. So the situation is complicated. <laughs> tracker blockers and navy blockers are also quite popular. Uh, on our passive traces, uh, we notice that uh, almost uh, the 20% of users install an <coughs> uh, But there are many uh, open questions. So we don't know whether they are effective, how effective they are, whether uh, they block many trackers or not, if they speed up our browser or slow down it, or if they let us uh, to save bandwidth. So in this work, uh, we want to fill the gap. We build a testbed to automatically benchmark and compare different tracker blockers uh, uh, plugins. We want to simulate the behavior of the average internet user uh, to automatically uh, gather and process uh, navigation data. Uh, we benchmark seven popular tracker blockers. We have Ghostery, which is uh, the most popular blocker. Then we have Disconnect, Blur, and the Block that are uh, popular and they, all the tracker blockers in the first line are based on a blacklist. So they have uh, uh, within them a, a list of all trackers to block. So they are very simple. Then we have a privacy badger, uh, which implements a behavioral algorithm that uh, automatically learns which are the trackers to block. Then we have Adiblock Plus, which is uh, the most popular ad blocker. And then we have Request Policy, which is a browser plugin, which is uh, slightly different from the others because it stops all connection to third party servers. So when you go on a website, you can, also, you can only download uh, objects from the first party server, and you cannot contact all the CDN nodes, uh, cloud providers, and also web trackers. This clearly is effective, but also breaks the web page rendering because images typically cannot be fetched, style sheet cannot be fetched, and so on. Okay, let's go through the methodology. We uh, built a testing tool that takes as input a list of URLs to test, a browser configuration that determines which is the tracker blocker to test. It instruments a browser to automatically visit the set of web pages. It gathers data, navigation data, and processes it to provide high-level statistics. Let's go through each one of these blocks. As your list, we want to mimic the behavior of the average internet user. So uh, we rely on uh, uh, popular services that rank websites. The most popular is Alexa, maybe most of you know it, but it is no more open source, so we tried uh, uh, Google Search, which is uh, another service that uh, ranks websites. It provides ranks organized in country and category. We picked uh, 10 categories for uh, the most popular Italian websites, and in total we have uh, 10 Web, uh, the 100 websites, 10 per category. And we visit uh, only web pages uh, of each uh, website. 
And then uh, we must uh, aut automate the way we test plugins. So uh, we want to build a different browser configuration for each plugin. So we start the web browser, we install the plugin to test, we configure it if necessary, and then we store the resulting browser profile in our testbed. There is some caveat in doing this process because, for example, the Ghostory plugin must be configured. If a normal user goes on uh, the Firefox uh, plugin market, downloads Ghostory, install it, uh, it does not block uh, any web tracker because at least you don't open the configuration of the plugin and manually say, okay, Ghostory, block all your trackers, it is ineffective. And this can be a problem for a user which is not expert in such field that feel, feels protected after installing Ghostory, but actually it is not because it, it did not configure it. There are other caveats, uh, for example, the iPrivacy Directive of the European Union. Uh, since 2012, uh, each website uh, must obtain the consent, the, the consent from the user before installing cookies and before using any tracking uh, mechanism. In fact, uh, maybe most of you noticed that uh, the first time you go on a website, there is a banner on the top of the page that asks you the consent for cookies. And if you don't uh, give the consent, you cannot basically continue browsing on the website. Before you give the consent to the website, you, uh, the website should not contact uh, any tracker. So to mimic the behavior of the average internet user, we manually visited all the websites and gave the consent uh, to cookies. <coughs> That's because typically users give, give consent to cookies for continuing browsing. So finally, we have uh, uh, seven different tracker blockers uh, and one additional profile that corresponds to the browser without any plugin installed uh, that we use uh, as baseline. Then we have two different situations in which uh, we gave or uh, didn't give the consent to cookies. We combine the con these uh, configurations of the web browser and we obtain uh, in total 16 configurations or browser profiles to test. Then our testbed must instrument uh, an automatic browser to visit the web pages. Uh, we rely on uh, Selenium. Selenium is uh, a tool set that automatically creates a new instance of a web browser and uh, instruments it to uh, visit uh, a set of web pages and gives you back a set of uh, statistics. Uh, it can instrument uh, many browsers, Firefox, Chrome, uh, Microsoft Edge, and so on. In this work, we use the Firefox, which is uh, the most reliable in our, in our testbed. There is uh, some caveat, because uh, some web pages are very slow. Some web pages can uh, make the browser crash. There are many situations that must be handled. Uh, so uh, we wait uh, until the onload event is fired by the browser and then we declare the visit as successful. If a timeout elapses, 60 seconds, uh, we kill the browser if it didn't crash and then we declare the visit as uh, unsuccessful. And this timeout uh, uh, intervened in the 5% uh, then we gather statistics from the, from the web browser and process them. The statistics that are returned are in the HAR format, which is the HTTP archive. It is a JSON data structure that contains uh, overall statistics about the visit and also uh, statistics for each object the page is composed of. Uh, it includes all the URLs of the objects of the page and also the exchange of cookies if any. We process uh, is each, uh, each visit to uh, extract high level statistics. We extract uh, for each page the list of contacted third parties, the list of contacted trackers, 
uh, but there uh, not exist a ground truth for our web tracker. So how can we be sure that uh, uh, that precise object belongs to a tracker? We use the union of four lists. Three of them come from uh, a tracker blocker plugin, while the last one comes uh, from a research project. Then we extract the loading time of the web page and finally also the volume in bytes, of, uh, which is the sum of the volume of all the objects that compose the web page. We perform our measurement campaign. We have 100 URLs. We have 16 different browser configurations, considering the seven uh, tracker blockers and the situation of constant given, constant not given to cookies and uh, 10 runs, uh, each, uh, each uh, URL configuration has been uh, run uh, 10 times. So in total, we have 16,000 uh, visits. The measurement campaign lasted seven days on a common of the shelf uh, machine. Let's go to the results. Uh, so the first question we want to answer is, uh, how many trackers do tracker blockers block? Uh, here we have uh, on the x-axis all the seven different tracker blockers, uh, all, the seven, all the different tracker blockers, uh, and on the y-axis we have how many trackers are uh, how many trackers uh, are contacted. The plain uh, the plain box uh, represents uh, the uh, the browser without any plugin installed, and it uh, so it is represented by means of box plot. The box spans from the first to the third quartile, while the whisk graph from the fifth to the 95th percentile. We've seen that uh, uh, in uh, average, uh, in median, 15 trackers are contacted by a web page. Then uh, the situation changes when we install a tracker blocker plugin. Uh, with the Block Plus, uh, less trackers are contacted. Uh, also with privacy badge, the rest are contacted, but we expected a uh, better result, but still uh, the result is similar to iBlock Plus. That's because privacy badge implements a behavior algorithm that uh, takes long to train, and we didn't go through this training phase. Then we have uh, Blur, Disconnect, and Block plugins that are uh, effective, they block uh, the greatest part of the trackers. Uh, but uh, surprisingly, there are some uh, very well-known trackers that are not blocked, and this is suspicious also because we said that sometimes web tracker, uh, tracker blockers uh, takes money from the content provider not to block the trackers. And then finally, we have Ghostry, that is uh, the, more, the most effective and blocks uh, almost uh, every tracker. Finally, we have request policy that performs very well because it blocks uh, basically all the connection to third party servers, but this clearly breaks the rendering of the web page. Uh, then we want to start the loading time if it changes uh, installing a tracker blocker plugin. We see that uh, typically web pages in our data set uh, take two up to six seconds to load. There are very fast web pages and very slow web pages. The difference uh, with uh, consent to cookies or uh, not consent to cookies is uh, marginal. Then when we install Privacy Badger, the page loading time increases. That's maybe because uh, <coughs> it implements uh, this sort of behavioral algorithm that uh, somehow is a heavyweight. Then, uh, with uh, all other plugins, uh, the browser is uh, faster. For example, if we take the example of Ghostery, in median, uh, with uh, the constant to cookies, uh, uh, it takes uh, 3.5 seconds uh, to load a web page with Ghostery it uh, goes down to three seconds. Then this effect is much more evident uh, for web pages that are slow. And it, uh, for example, the uh, third quartile goes from uh, five seconds 
to five seconds with Ghostery. So uh, slower pages become faster. And then we can uh, study whether tracker blockers let us to say bandwidth. Uh, typically, typically uh, uh, websites uh, download uh, 1 to 2.5 megabytes of data. Then when we install uh, tracker blockers, less objects are downloaded and so we save bandwidth. Uh, so finally, we want to uh, study whether websites respect the European Privacy Directive. Remind that before we give the consent to cookies, the law says that no tracker should be contacted by the website. Here in this plot, we see uh, our 100 websites that we tested. And on the y-axis, we have how many trackers are contacted by the website. The red line, the green line, represents uh, uh, the situation after we gave consent to cookies, and we see that uh, there are websites that embed more than 100 web trackers. But this, uh, this is uh, completely legal, because web tracking is legal. But what uh, is surprising is that uh, the red dot represents uh, how many trackers are contacted before we give the consent to, to web tracking. And ideally, all red dots should be at zero because no web tracker should be contacted. But we see that uh, most websites do not respect uh, the European uh, cookie directive and embed web trackers even before we give the consent. And this is, uh, is not allowed by the directive. So, in conclusion, uh, we built uh, a testbed to automatically compare and benchmark uh, tracker blockers, uh, tracker blocker plugins. Uh, the testbed, uh, the tools and the data set are open source and can be downloaded by anyone. We compared seven tracker blockers. Uh, we noticed that Ghostry is the most effective and offers the best protection from trackers. The browser is faster if you install a tracker blocker plugin. Then finally, we studied the respect of the e-privacy directive, and uh, we noticed that most websites, most Italian websites in this case, do not respect uh, the directive, and they install uh, cookies and contact web trackers uh, even before we give the consent. Thank you. So for the EU directive, you said that um, a lot of websites uh, contact trackers even if there is no consent. Yeah. But is it really trackers or is it just third-party websites? No, th these are trackers because uh, they belong to our list of verified trackers. List of your list, okay. Yeah. And so I have another very quick question. Yeah. In the um, for the last one, the the one that, that stopped like all third party access, one of the the plugin that stopped all the third party uh, website. Mean, okay, request policy. Yeah, this request policy. Yeah. Yes. So you said it breaks the rendering of the page. Yeah. Have you checked for other plugins if this happens? If, if there are problems yeah. in the rendering, uh, yes, we had, had a manual overview. Typically, there is no problem in the rendering. Sometimes, but very rarely, there is some. Uh, false positive in the list of these uh, tracker blockers so some element might be missing but this is a real situation. With the request policy all third party elements are blocked so uh, at this point uh, uh, all websites host their object on CDNs. So. so have you thought of a metric to, because it's a trade-off here, yeah? you want your plugin to block as many trackers as possible but give you the best <coughs> experience you yeah, you should have a very thing. precise list of the trackers. <coughs> yeah. So here, in terms of data, the red is with blocking. The red is, uh, let's go back. 
The red is uh, when we gave consent to cookies. The blue is uh, when we didn't give consent to cookies. And these are the different plugins. So play in a privacy badge area with more data. Uh, yes, yes, you block, with you block we have less data than privacy badger. Okay, interesting. Yes, this is surprising for the block. I didn't, didn't say that because the block is specialized in blocking advertisements. But actually, we, uh, we don't save uh, much bandwidth even in the block. Right, and in the next one where you talk about page load time. Okay. Yeah. Did you quantify which ones give the biggest penalty? Which tracker gives the biggest penalty? You know, we didn't analyze this aspect. Okay. Uh, maybe it's not just one tracker that gives penalty. Uh, it's that some web page embeds more than 100 web trackers. It means that more than 100 TCP connection issued more with more than 100 web servers. So the page became so complex. Also because of the rendering that the plans have to do. The rendering, I, I don't know because uh, typically uh, objects <coughs> belonging to web trackers are hidden, are very small, they are not uh, rendered by the browser. So it could be probably a network. Uh, One more question for the, for the ignoring the EU directive. You had, did you say that, that those stats were for uh, Italian websites? <coughs> Yes, yes. We, in our test bed, we used only Italian websites, okay. but this is a European directive, so it is in force in all countries of the European Union. So they don't respect it in Italy just because it's a suggestion? Because nobody checked. <laughs> <laughs> nobody checks, actually. And so they do not respect. There is the banner, but the banner, it is ineffective. They say, OK, you have to click OK, and then I will install uh, trackers, but actually, but they many of them don't actually ask for a consent with OK. They say if you if you want to use the website, you have to consent. But so uh, actually, you can just X the message. Yes, the, that's true. But the directive is very clear. Be the the consent is an opt-in consent, and before it, uh, no tracker should be contacted. So it's uh, it's not uh, a legal behavior. So just so what, but frankly speaking, Germany do what this time. We did the <laughs> test also with German, uh, and, uh, British, and uh, Polish, and Spanish website. Germany do worse. So I know it was one of the, 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 the clients you think about, but um, do you have any anecdotal evidence about, let's say, using no scripts means that there's fewer trackers because a lot of them are accessed using JavaScript code? Or Yes, you can block JavaScript, but actually no website uh, keep working without JavaScript. I, I guess. That's not my experience. <laughs> ah, you, you block JavaScript sure. on your platform. Yeah? OK, that should be interesting. Yeah, you, you could also block, for example, uh, the referrer header in the HTTP request, because it is uh, often used by web trackers to understand which is the target web page. But there are many other techniques that I use. Sometimes they fingerprint your device, uh, and maybe Mm. JavaScript is not needed uh, for doing these things. Uh, maybe this flash that is doing some strange uh, fingerprint on the device. So techniques are diverse. Right, I mean, the, the, the ironic thing is by doing things like by by turning on any of these, you're sending out a flag about yourself already. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so. so I have two questions. The first one is how you measure the loading time. So you wait till the real content of the web page is low, or till all the elements, including the ads, are low? We considered the onload event of the browser. The onload event of the browser uh, is fired when the main HTML document is downloaded, fetched, and all the objects are, uh, ob all the objects pointed by the main HTML document are downloaded. So including other and other Yes, yes. There might be some object that is downloaded after the onload event because sometimes there is uh, some trigger, some callback uh, that triggers uh, other traffic where, uh, when the onload event is fired. That's uh, sometimes mm, used to collect metrics 
okay, if I am uh, the content provider, I want the client to send some sort of ping mm -hmm. when the page is loaded to collect metrics about page loading time of my users and sometimes, so you can see also traffic after the on element. But typically, on load is the uh, metric, uh, the most used metrics for uh, uh, page loading time. And, and the second one is, uh, <coughs> you told that most of these tools are visiting the list, right? Yeah. Uh, so they should know the well-known trackers and maybe they are missing the small local or, uh, companies that are, that are not that, that common. You think that since your methodology is using uh, popular websites, Italian popular websites and maybe are using the main uh, trackers, the results are a little biased to that. And if you go to non-common websites, you are going to find, I mean, they are going to behave worse or not? Ma, I think uh, that uh, Italian websites use popular web trackers. Uh, that's because we manually inspected the list of these, uh, of these plugins here and we uh, analyzed which web trackers are not blocked and actually they are very well-known web trackers. So uh, that's not the case of uh, regional or uh, unpopular. There is some well-known web, tra web tracker that is not blocked. Who knows why? Um, I would actually like to add to Roberto. Um, there's a big Spanish bank who is now entering the tracking business. Okay. So the problem is that they're using the same domain as for the bank. Yeah. So you can really block them using, for instance, uh, easy list. Um, yeah, you mean uh, if the tracker is uh, a first party? So they, they basically are uh, trying to put their JavaScript on newspapers. Mm -hmm. And they are basically trying to infer what kind of content you browse on the those newspapers. Mm -hmm. And uh, which is the problem is that you cannot the, block the, that the domain. JavaScript is actually being fetched from the same domain as the bank. Okay, but typically these uh, uh, tracker blockers don't use only the host name, but uh, they use the yeah, full path. So maybe the URL of that element will be something.js slash something other. So maybe it is possible to block it. But the problem is that those, is especially CLS, this is basically manually curated in, in most cases. Yes, so yeah. they are very incomplete to some extent. Yes, yes. Um, so actually, I have an answer about your. So you were talking about trackers in Italy. So there is a paper by Castelluccia from 2013, and they say that the ecosystem, the tracking ecosystem in Europe is mostly American. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of answer the question. If any, anywhere you crawl from in Europe, you will basically give away your data. Even when you make the American, you always find surprises of a yeah, local yeah, company. Yeah, yeah. And, and then there's the problem, trade, right? the problem is that this local small company doesn't have anything to lose and are the ones who yeah. the real systems. While the other, Google is not going to do anything that bad because it goes into a newspaper and, uh, and they have a problem. But the small ones, they are the ones that are a problem. So then you can do a lot of small that thing. <laughs> <laughs> so my question was, uh, for the concern part, did you try to crawl from outside of Europe to check if they actually care about where you are working? Yes, in another work we did uh, some this kind of test, but actually the web page is, is identical. If you assess, uh, for example, from Australia, uh, an Italian newspaper, mm -hmm. you will get the same, uh, uh, the same banner of cookies. Have you seen any evidence that the, that the um, consent banner is even passed on to third party trackers? So, obviously, you consent to, you click I accept cookies. Um, normally, that would be something like setting a cookie for that domain. But the third party trackers probably aren't even aware of that as long as they've got embedded JS or something else on the page. But they wouldn't even know whether you consented to cookies or not. Have you looked at that at all? No, but the webmaster of the site should block each JavaScript, each uh, web tracker before the consent is given. So it's very easy to test the situation. Open a new instance with a fresh, a fresh profile of your browser. Go on a website, see uh, whether cookies are installed and trackers are contacted without doing any user action and just leave the banner there. If there is uh, some cookie or some track is contacted, it breaks the directive. Thank you. So 
Did you try to talk to the data protection agency in, in Italy and tell them this, or? Uh, sorry? Did you try and contact the data protection agency in Italy and uh, tell we, them? We plan to do that because now, no, now we're, we are working on a large scale measurement about uh, the respect of the cookie directive. That's, uh, that's one option because the, the picture is very, uh, it's very clear, nobody respects it. And Germany does worse. <laughs> <laughs> yes, also because the transposition of the directive in Germany has been different because the directive must be transposed into law before coming in force, and so there is some uh, it's complicated. diversity between the countries, but actually nobody respect. We made some uh, tests uh, for all countries of Europe, uh, and we noticed that Italy is one of the best countries. If you go in Germany, <laughs> Spain, the situation is even worse. Okay, in general, Italy is one of the best countries. <laughs> <laughs>